Hello everyone, I am Sayed Nawaz and welcome back to my YouTube channel Petroleum Universe. So you can see that even in today's video we are going to see about the casing design. And in previous video we have been discussing about this. Figure, there, this is just an outlook uh, for a complete casing. This is an important point uh, that you have to consider to provide a reservoir fluid control. And in today's video we are going to discuss about how the casing has to be designed, how we have to approach the design of casing. In this first we have to design the process, uh, uh, what casing size is uh, perfect for this particular section. And after that, after selecting the casing size, we have to uh, we have to see that what setting depth of casing should be. And later on, after selecting these two points, we have to design the parameters, is the properties, collapse pressure, burst pressure, tension by axial load, and uh, bending bending uh, effect if it is required. After defining uh, the properties, we have uh, like usually the total properties how much uh, what we have to measure is collapse, burst, yield strength and in yield, yield strength we have to see about the tensile and compressive force and later on we have to see the biaxial loading consideration. The last we have to see the effect of bending. Then after we design the properties, then we have find the magnitude of the pre-designed properties. Then uh, the first one is we have to calculate the collapse pressure, then burst pressure, then tensile or compressive strength calculation. Then at last we have to see the safety factor for that particular section. So let us approach uh, for the next for the first point which is nothing but your selection of casing size so this is nothing but a standard uh, casing chart uh, which is approved uh, uh, by api uh, american petroleum institute so as you can see over here that uh, we always start uh, designing the casing from the bottom that uh, first uh, let us consider that uh, now we are planning for this 4 inch of casing size or liner size so once we select the casing size, you can see that uh, we can uh, we can approach for two bit sizes. Like uh, to drill four inch casing, we have we can use four three by four k bit size or hole size, or else we can also use five seven by eight hole size. That five seven by eight hole size should uh, be in seven inch of casing size. For uh, this seven inch of casing size, the hole size either it should be of uh, 8.5 hole size or 8 3 by 3 by 4 of hole size and later on if you after this if you consider for this bit size the casing size should be 10 3 by 4 and you can even go for 9 5 by 8 or 9 7 by 8 and uh, the standard procedure is once we have 8 3 by 4 we always have to go for 10 3 by 4 then again similarly it follows the same chart like for 10 3 by 4 we can either go for 14 3 by 4 or uh, 12 1 by 4 the, the whole size should be and for this whole size uh, the above string should be of 16 inches for this 14 3 by 4 and this 16 inches should have uh, the whole size of 26 either 26 inches or 20 inches now if we select the 20 inch of whole size then we can go for 24 casing size the pre casing size should be 24 inches and if you are selecting 26 then the pre casing size should be 30 inches then obviously if you are for 30 inch of casing we know that uh, we require 36 inch of hole size so as you can see in this diagram that uh, one at one point uh, you have uh, the complete line and the other one uh, you have some dotted indications so this complete line uh, is a uh, globally used method and for some standard condition to that particular situation uh, we have to follow these dotted lines so once we are following these dotted lines, we have to consider some different parameters. So let us jump for casing depth selection. So the casing depth selection is mainly dependent on the depth and density graph. Like you can see in, in this depth and density graph, uh, you have a fracture gradient and the pore pressure gradient. Uh, between these two uh, gradients, uh, the whole mud plan is designed. As you can see over here that uh, this is your pressure, pore pressure gradient and uh, this is your fracture pressure gradient and you can also see that uh, there is one more line above the pore pressure gradient and uh, below the fracture gradient that line is uh, considered to be an safety margin that safety margin is uh, different for every casing property like for uh, tensile strength it is different and for collapse and even for burst it is different we are going to see in, in some next slides let us see that uh, this point uh, fracture gradient uh, represent the point at which the casing may get fractured 
and uh, this pore pressure uh, gradient is nothing but at this pressure the fluid within uh, the formation may enter into uh, the fluid which is circulating in the subsurface while drilling for this fracture gradient it is nothing but uh, the fluid uh, has to uh, the circulating fluid should maintain a pressure which should not exceed the fracture pressure if we, if it exceeds uh, the or the fracture pressure then it will damage that particular formation and, in, and that particular fluid will enter into that particular formation. So as you can see that uh, this conductor casing is for a weak formation. So uh, you can uh, decide uh, the casing shoe of this particular zone uh, by using offset well data and uh, this particular surface casing has uh, the major use uh, means the depth of this particular surface casing is up to is exactly the about the depth of water aquifer means the shallow water zone fresh water zone after that you can see that uh, once uh, this line as you can see from down that uh, this is our objective uh, depth phase zone so obviously we know that uh, just above the uh, phase zone we have the production casing so this is an casing shoe and uh, you can see that uh, this casing shoe has an pore pressure gradient of uh, this point uh, let us consider that uh, this particular point is a so if it is going from a to b so as it moves from a to b with constant mud weight so at particular at this point you can see that uh, that mud weight has uh, reached the fracture gradient to that particular formation so for the formation uh, the the same mud weight is fracture pressure from that point you have to reduce your mud weight up to safety margin of pore pressure at this point your uh, pre casing or uh, over here it is intermediate casing the intermediate casing has to be installed so the depth of intermediate casing is up to this particular point then after this point c once you reach exactly with a straight line you have reached the point d when where the same mud weight over here at point c has become uh, the fracture pressure at this point d at that particular point the depth of casing is decided that is your surface casing as i said you that uh, the surface casing depth is depend on uh, water rectifier that is fact and uh, over here I am just trying to explain you how the casing depth uh, has been uh, decided with the help of pore pressure and fracture gradient graphs. So as now we have uh, selected uh, the casing depth now we'll uh, see the next uh, pro properties which are the design properties. So in design properties uh, we are going to consider the collapse pressure. So the collapse pressure as you can see in this figure that let us suppose that uh, this is a pipe. So here you have an internal pressure which, which is less than in this particular collapse criteria the internal pressure is less than the external pressure so as you can see that uh, due to that high external pressure the damage of the pipe is just like this so as you can see that uh, this collapse of a particular pipe has four stages those are nothing but your elastic collapse transition collapse plastic collapse and yield strength collapse pressure so based on diameter and thickness there are four types of collapse pressure and this particular collapse pressure has been have been designed by api american petroleum institute uh, with a series of 5c33 then uh, that reports uh, some uh, the uh, some theoretical and uh, practical formulas uh, which are like this for yield strength if you are calculating uh, the collapse pressure then the collapse pressure has to be uh, calculated by using this formula 2 into yp where yp is uh, minimum yield strength of that steel pipe into d by t where uh, d as an outer diameter of a particular pipe and uh, t is the thickness of casing then minus 1 divided by d by t whole square so, uh, one more thing i wrote over here is like uh, x is less than 15.545 so this magnitude 15.545 is your d by t ratio of that particular casing so if this d by t uh, ratio is 15.545 less than 15.545 then for calculating collapse pressure you have to use this formula then you can see the ranges over here for plastic the range of d by t ratio should be 15 between 15 to 26 then for transition it should be 26 to 39.91 and for elastic it should be greater than 39 so let us see the next one whereas all these formulas are used uh, when you have no axial load uh, the axial load is uh, the ability of a metal to tolerate uh, the gradual progressive force without any permanent damage or deformation so this particular axial load is the load which is acting according to the axis of that particular body so collapse pressure with axial stress so under field conditions 
always remember that when you are calculating in terms of field conditions you have to use this particular formula so even for calculating these uh, terms uh, we have different formulas we, we, we will see that so a given casing section will be under a combined action of external and internal pressure and axial load due to its own weight so let us suppose that uh, uh, 7 to 8 of the casing string of uh, 7 to 8 casing so they may have uh, their own weight which is affecting their uh, property which is affecting their tensile strength uh, for calculating collapse pressure under that condition we have to use this formula whereas uh, ypa your equivalent yield strength okay and uh, under root of uh, 1 minus 0 0.75 into yield strength under axial load divided by yield strength with no axial load minus 0 0.5 into yield strength uh, with axial load divided by yp this particular whole into yield strength whereas uh, for calculating axial load yield strength is uh, we have to consider uh, this particular real point and we have to divide this uh, yield point with the area of that particular pi whereas uh, the area you can calculate as uh, pi by 4 into outer diameter outer diameter square minus inner diameter square so after dividing that you can use that formula to estimate equivalent yield strength so after this now we will see the burst pressure as so as you are seeing the burst pressure so here you can see that uh, the burst the pipe is getting blast means uh, the internal pressure is always is greater than the external pressure applied to of casing damage pipe is an example for burst pressure so it is an uh, minimum internal pressure at which pipe permanently deform pipe doesn't have any kind of axial load or any kind of external load so api gives you the burst pressure to estimate burst pressure as uh, actually it is uh, 2 into yield strength into thick uh, divided by d by t then multiplied by wall thickness correction factor well uh, where uh, wall thickness correction factor is almost uh, 0 0.875 so that 0 0.875 into 2 gives you 1.75 instead of writing 2 into y p into uh, divided by d by t i just wrote 1.75 after that if you see we can even estimate the burst pressure with the lame equation so now let us see the graphical representation uh, means how that burst and collapse uh, will behave according to stress when stress is increasing with increase in depth so as the stress increases the external pressure will also get increased. There will be an increase in collapse pressure. Okay. So, as there is an increase in external pressure, we have to maintain uh, uh, the internal pressure according to that. So, for entire uh, well, the, uh, the burst pressure will be at the burst pressure will be a constant line. Whereas for tension, uh, it will decrease uh, with respect to depth and pressure. As the depth increases or the stress increases, the tension of the particular tubular body is decreasing so once you come to yield strength yield strength metal tolerance capacity when there is a gradual increase in force so that is classified this yield strength is classified into axial load and compressive load so this axial load uh, that will act along with axis of uh, or the body and the compressive load uh, will act perpendicular to the axis so to estimate the axial load axial load is equals to pi by 4 into yield strength multiplied by the square of four diameter the square and difference of the diameters so let us see the next point which is safety factor so the api has designed some safety factors for uh, the above design properties for collapse pressure the design uh, the design factor should be between 1.0 to 1.125 and the standard one they are using as 1.125 and for tension it is between 1 to 2 and the standard what they are using is 1.8 for burst it is 1.1 to 1.33 they are using as standard as 1.1 for triaxial it is 1.25 so now we will see the properties of casing so it is nothing but the size of the casing and how they are going how they are connected and what is the weight of that particular casing and uh, what is the grade and what is the length of that casing the casing size is also said to be an outer diameter the od is recognized as the casing after that if you see uh, i wrote and drift diameter so drift diameter which uh, the casing can allow allowable diameter for next coming tool let us suppose uh, the 36 inch outer diameter of a casing and the inner dia is uh, 35 and drift diameter is of 34 34 inches so the next coming tool has to be 34 inches or less than 34 
inches. The breaking out of the sequence design factor what you have to see is the connection of the casing and the mud weight what we are going to maintain and we have to see the cementing process what we are using and the mud weight of the cementing fluid, cementing, cement slurry even we have to see that and we have to see the dog like severity whereas dog like severity uh, I am going to explain in the uh, next videos. Now let us see the weight. So the pipe weight is usually expressed as a weight per unit length in terms of LB per feet. So as you can see over here the unit itself says you that if you are considering the weight of a pipe then you have to consider the weight of a pipe for each for every or for just one feet. So to explain uh, to understand that in better way let us see that uh, we have a pipe of uh, 9.625 diameter and the inner pipe diameter is changing and even the wall thickness is changing. First of all I, I will just like to say you that uh, the weight of a pipe is directly proportional to the wall thickness. So let us uh, consider that uh, the length of a pipe uh, 31 feet. Then if you multiply uh, this 31 inch, uh, 31 feet of pipe with the weight of a pipe uh, where it is as 53.5. So that will give you 1658 LBs of one pipe, the weight of a one pipe. So as you can see that as uh, the thickness decreases, the weight of a pipe also decreases. Now let us see the grade. So in grade if you see that relate to the tensile strength of a steel from which the casing is made. So that particular grade is dependent on two properties which is chemical composition and mechanical properties whereas mechanical properties is nothing but your yield strength minimum yield strength and so on whereas chemical composition means uh, the, the chemical which are used at the time of manufacturing this steel pipes or casing so the steel grade how we can identify that uh, by which uh, chemical uh, the steel the, uh, the particular casing is uh, manufactured so that will give you a standard code which consists of a letter and a number. Let us see the example. Uh, here I wrote this casing specification. As you can see that uh, the grade of a casing, let us suppose it is uh, K55. So this particular K, this particular K is another chemical what they have used to manufacture this uh, grade of casing and this 55 is minimum yield strength. So I hope you understood uh, what that, how that code represented like uh, N80 uh, will represent that 80 is a minimum yield strength and uh, P10, uh, P110 uh, whereas 110 in terms of 50,000, 80,000 and this is 1 lakh minimum yield strength. So let us see the next uh, thing which is casing connections. So according to API uh, they said that there are 4 types of casing connections uh, which is a short round thread and coupling, long round thread and coupling buttress thread and coupling and extreme line thread and uh, whereas SG and LCSG are combined called as API 8 round threads. 8 round threads means in uh, 1 inch there will be 8 threads in a casing. So that's an end for uh, today's video. I have used uh, this particular reference uh, to prepare uh, this video. If you have any doubt you can even refer uh, these textbooks or you can use my comment box and uh, that's an end for today's video. Hope you like it. So if you like then hit like, share, comment and subscribe to, uh, to my YouTube channel Petroleum Universe. And if you have any doubts then you can uh, use my comment box. So thanks so much. You can follow me on uh, YouTube, Facebook and LinkedIn. And if you want uh, this presentation then you can uh, visit my page of SlideShare by clicking on this link.